been doing quite a lot of cleaning. I mainly cleaned the, the keys here, uh, the piano keys. Um, I also cleaned quite a bit of the chassis, mostly on top of the chassis and on the sides. Um, not everything has yet been done, so still quite a lot of work, but I did make uh, some progress. I also cleaned the power cord, which is also now white again. It used, was completely brown due to the dirt and grime that was covering everything. Yeah, this radio was really, really dirty. Um, so the, the chassis is cleaning up, has cleaned up quite nicely. There is, the metal is a bit tarnished here that you see. It's a bit oxidized, I think. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I don't think I will be able to to get that off or... Um, but... Yeah, um, I, I, I don't think I can get it any cleaner than this. Um, also, I haven't yet been able to do everything, so you see there are still some spots here and there that still need to be cleaned. Um, also, I, I, the underside still needs to be done. There's also still quite a bit of work, but the, the top side was by far the dirtiest part of the radio. I also managed to figure out how the clutch and flywheel mechanism uh, should be working. Um, it's not working at this moment correctly how it should be, but I managed to figure out uh, with some help online how it should be working. Um, so let me set up the camera a bit better so that I can explain how it normally should work and then I afterwards I can try to figure out what is now exactly wrong with the clutch and, and flywheel in this radio because that I, I don't understand it yet completely. As I already explained in um, the previous video the, this radio has a mechanism with a flywheel and a clutch system which allows you to um, tune both AM and F FM with the same tuning knob so um, more simple radios they would have two separate tuning knobs for AM and for FM because the radio also has two separate tuning condensers one for AM and one for FM and um, they need to be tuned separately but with this radio you have this mechanism over here um, which allows you to switch between the two different tuning condensers and to be able to just use one um, tuning knob to either tune the AM tuning condenser or the FM tuning condenser. So how does it work? I have already removed the dial cords but normally you see here you have two pulleys, you have one on this side of the flywheel and one on that side of the flywheel. So normally your dial cord for AM goes over this uh, pulley mechanism and is then connected to the AM tuning condenser and the same here for FM. So you have the FM dial cord which goes over this pulley on the back side of the flywheel and then connects to the FM uh, tuning condenser. Um, so the flywheel here in the middle should normally be detached to um, attached to the rod. So you have here the rod, which is um, which which is turned, of course, when you turn the tuning condenser uh, like this. So with my radio, this is detached from the rod because, as you see, if I'm tuning the rod here, the flywheel doesn't move. That's not okay. So normally, <coughs> the flywheel should be attached to the rod as you turn the, the knob, then the flywheel, this flywheel should also turn and this makes sure that you have a nice and smooth um, turning uh, yeah, uh, and that also that you can give it a, uh, a fling let's say and that, keep, that it keeps momentum for a while so it gives a nice and um, weight to the, to the feeling when you are turning so that's the main purpose of this flywheel over here but normally so this is connected to the rod but the pulleys they are loose so they normally they are not connected so the the, the rod is just going through a pulley but it's not driving the pulley itself now when you uh, select AM then for example there is a fork uh, on the bottom side of the radio I can show it uh, later which detaches um, the 
FM pulley from the flywheel. So what you do is you turn the tuning knob that of course turns the rod. The rod of, is attached to the flywheel and then the flywheel is norm, should normally be spinning around as well. And then one of the two pulleys is pushed against the flywheel because you see there are springs here on either side of the pulley. And that makes the flywheel rub against or yeah, grip against the, uh, the pulley and then this makes the correct dial cord turn. So if you see I can I can here press a button so this is what I'm doing now is FM so and then you see here clearly that the AM pulley is detached from the flywheel so normally if you now would turn um, the tuning button then the flywheel would turn and that would um, also turn the FM pulley and the FM dial cord. When you switch to AM then it, the other thing should happen. So then this pulley will be pushed against the flywheel and that one should be detached. But this is now not the case because everything is loose. Uh, the, the main issue here with my radio is that the flywheel is loose from the from the rod and this means that if I'm switching between bands that the flywheel itself is also moving which should not be the case. Um, second thing which is wrong is that the flywheel here is rubbing against the side of the chassis. Um, which is very suspicious and I don't understand yet why this is happening. Um, I'm maybe even cons thinking that the flywheel is either not original for this type of radio or that someone has been in here and that it's installed backwards. Because the diameter on this side of the flywheel is larger than the one on that side. And it's with, so it could be that if I just turn it around that it will work. I'm not sure. Um, so I have to take this mechanism apart just to figure out how it is working. Um, so let me show you the, the bottom side. So that's the bottom side of the mechanism. This is the fork I was talking about. So if you push either FM or AM then you see that this fork is moving and it's detaching one of the two pulleys from the flywheel and it's uh, freeing the other one so that the spring can push uh, the correct the FM pulley in this case because I selected FM against the flywheel so and if I then deselect FM and go back to AM again then you see that it's going in the other direction so that's how this mechanism switches between um, tuning AM or FM. Basically what you are doing is you are moving the flywheel and then depending on the position of this fork the flywheel is pushing against the correct pulley. So the AM or the FM pulley where, which is containing the dial cord and the dial cord is um, connected to the correct tuning condenser. And while I have the radio upside down let me just give you a quick tour of the underside of the radio. It actually looks a lot better than the top side. I haven't been in here cleaning yet. Um, there are still some things which need to be cleaned. There is um, some grime, some, some dust here and there. So there is still quite a bit of cleaning work here on the underside. But not that much. And I also, at first sight, I'm not spotting any repairs. I'm not spotting any hacks or I don't think anyone has been in here to repair. Maybe maybe that white con capacitor there is not um, original could be uh, I think it I think that's a repair I'm not really sure but apart from that one I don't think anything has been changed in here which is very good news of course um, well I detached the complete mechanism I removed the boat pulleys and all the springs so I could um, position the flywheel how and where I wanted um, and then I flipped it around actually and I also uh, attached it again to the to the rod so it works more or less now as expected but so if I turn the rod and you can see the flywheel turning but uh, no matter what I do or how I position it it always see it always hits the side of the chassis here and now it's stuck again so here it here it's hitting the chassis so now 
Yeah, see now, now it's stuck again. So okay. So no matter what I do, I always end up with the flywheel hitting the chassis. So this is making me think that this flywheel, knowing that it's a common point of failure on these uh, radios, that it's not an original one. I think somebody at some point replaced the the flywheel by the from um, a flywheel from another radio I, I I don't know but I don't think this is original I'm, I'm not completely sure of course but I don't think it is um, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a bit of sanding paper and I'm going to sand off the one the larger side here of the wheel and then we we'll can see if I can make it fit that it won't that it can turn without hitting here the the side of the chassis. I've removed the flywheel from the mechanism and as you can see you have an inner ring and an outer ring and they are made of two types of different types of metal and the inner ring is um, is a bit textured and is more a brittle type of um, metal and this is one of the two pulleys and as you can see on one side it also has a sort of grippy material applied so if this pulley is pushed against the flywheel then if you turn the flywheel then uh, it grips and the pulleys are uh, turning as well. Um, the problem however on a lot of these radios is that the inner ring here is a common point of failure this, this metal starts deteriorating after a while you can already see that this mine here is also starting to crack. However, the fact that mine is still quite okay, combined with the fact that it doesn't really fit into the chassis, is making me think that this flywheel is not original and it's coming from another radio. Um, also, I measured it, it's not completely round, so I don't know if this is... It has a, a part number on it. I see, but I don't think that this is from this type of radio. Um, so what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to just, I already started doing it, filing it a bit smaller, um, uh, so that I hope that I can, um, that it doesn't hit the side of the of the chassis anymore, so that uh, I can maybe make it fit. Uh, okay, um, next issue. While I was trying to uh, correctly position and to correctly shape a bit the side of the flywheel, the thread inside the inner wheel of the flywheel here broke off. So this mean also you see it's uh, cracked. So as I said, this inner part is a common failure on a lot of these radios, and I think it's also falling apart here on mine now. So what did I do? So this was the original bolt um, that didn't work in here anymore. So what did I do? I put a square nut there in the the hole because yeah, it was exactly shaped like one of the square nuts I had laying around. And then I took a, a longer bolt, well, which um, with the correct thread size for for this nut. And then, as you can see here, I shaped the end of the the bolt because this bolt is normally is too thick yeah? the, it's, it's much thicker than, than, than the original one so I removed the thread on the end and shaped it a bit and also cut it in length so that it would fit inside the inner part here of the flywheel and then I also um, made the head of the, the bolt a bit smaller so that it would fit in this hole so then I can so now I'm using, in fact, the this original, um, the, the new bolt here, to tighten the flywheel uh, to the rod of the tuning knob. Um, so normally I think that should work. Um, I'm not not using anymore the thread of this inner part now. I'm now just using the thread of this nut, which is located here, um, to attach the flywheel to the to the shaft of the of this of the tuning. So let's let's check if it works. Um, I think I think it should work. And that's how it looks when the flywheel is back in place. Now 
it uh, I had to still uh, file quite uh, a bit of the side of the flywheel because the flywheel is not <laughs> completely circular um, there was it was more like an oval shape so it was hitting here the side of the chassis but now it's spinning quite well it's still hitting slightly so it's possible that I could still file off a bit I should still file off a bit more maybe um, let's see because I'm not really sure that it's in the correct position for that I need to um, assemble the entire mechanism I need to put the pulleys and the springs and everything and then we can see if the mechanism works but this is already f great so it's now spinning again the way it should be so and now you see also clearly the function of this wheel eh? so if you're using it to tune then you can just fling the knob and it keeps on spinning so that uh, the tuning needle just goes to one to completely to one side if you just by spinning the the tuning knob which is uh, actually quite nice and this is how it looks when it's assembled back together um, it took me quite a, quite a while to get it back in there and it's more or less working as it should now it still needs a bit of fine tuning um, as you see the flywheel is still rubbing here against the side so I need to uh, file a bit more off from the from the flywheel itself um, but for the rest it's working rather well so if you can clearly now see if I select FM then you can clearly see that the FAM pulley is removed from the flywheel and when I turn the flywheel the FM pulley is turning like it should and when I select AM then yeah I need to help the buttons a bit because uh, inside the switching still needs to be cleaned then you can see that the AM pulley is turning when I turn the tuning knob but the FM pulley is not um, touching the flywheel anymore so that one is now free so see this is how it should work and also when it's in FM mode you can push the that was AM when it's in FM mode you can push the the button to disable the automatic frequency control so that that function is also working so yeah even though it was kind of a bit of a struggle but still managed to make a bit of progress uh, today so I'll go ahead now cleaning the radio a bit more and also trying to fine-tune this mechanism making sure that it doesn't drop here anymore and then uh, I hope that you subscribe to the channel and like this video um, so that you can keep up with the rest of the restoration proje uh, project so see you next time